Hi, I'm Rap Critic, and this episode was requested by Travis Odenzoff. And if you'd like to request an episode for me to review, plus see early episodes before everyone else, go here for more info. So let's talk about MC Hammer. Now, many of you may only remember You Can't Touch This, one of MC Hammer's biggest singles. And as time has gone by, many have assumed that because they can't remember any of his other songs, he must have been a one-hit wonder. But that's actually not true. He had several top 40 hits. But judging by his most played song on Spotify, most people don't even remember his biggest hit, which was actually this. Yeah, I bet most of you have never even heard this song before. In fact, just as a refresher, here are the other songs that have charted higher than You Can't Touch This in America. That's right, even the freaking Adams Family Groove charted higher than You Can't Touch This. I was shocked too. Now, of course, if you're watching all these videos, you'll probably notice something. MC Hammer comes off as a pretty lighthearted, silly, and I dare say corny guy. I mean, he had a kid's cartoon show, for God's sakes. And to make matters worse, it was a really bad kid's cartoon show. I'd feel better if people would leave me alone. But ignoring that piece of animated garbage. If you go back and watch live footage of Hammer performing, it's undeniable he was an incredible entertainer. He had the footwork and choreography that had many people thinking he was going to be hip-hop's Michael Jackson. Hell, he might even be bigger. Just watch this guy. He has an awe-inspiring energy, and nobody in rap had had such a stellar live show up to that point. Now, if you noticed, I haven't exactly mentioned his rapping skills yet, and, well, when it came to rapping, he was a great dancer. I mean, look at him go. But, oh boy, when it comes to rapping, he was... Mediocre. She's a bomb and a legend in my memory. I have it better, but tell me where could she be? Like really mediocre. Give me a song, a rhythm, make them sweat. That's what I'm giving them. No, cause Hammer don't play that you try to get my boy. You better step back. We got the break just to make it today. For someone who was literally the most famous rapper at the time, the guy couldn't hold a candle to guys like Big Daddy Kane or even Heavy D. The problem came in when the influence of more complex, hardcore rappers started taking effect in the mainstream. And when the fun, poppy, high-energy, house-hop, CNC music factory stuff got played out, everyone had to adapt. And no one adapted worse than MC Hammer. Because how do you take this guy and put him in the context of Tupac, Wu-Tang Clan, and Bone Thugs and Harmony? Well, if you thought, completely abandon your original style in an unconvincing hardcore front of oversized stocking caps and black jerseys. Well, that was their second guess after their first one got banned from MTV. Yeah, they stripped him of everything but a Speedo and baby oil. It was... miscalculated to say the least. I mean, there's no way you can believably go from... I see her face and I can't let go. She's in my dreams and my heart. To... We like the girls with the pump and a pump and a pump and a pump. You know, rap music contains a lot of metaphorical dick waving, but when you're literally waving your dick, I, I think it's just a step too far. I mean, wow, imagine an MC so desperate to prove his manhood to the rap industry, he was willing to just thrust his zebra skin wrapped dick in your face. For real, what self-respecting rapper would sell themselves by just stripping down to their underwear? Well, I, I, come on, those, those are female rappers. See, see, see we, we expect them to be marketed purely as sex objects. That's totally different. You know what I find funny about this, though? The fact that people were calling MC Hammer a sellout when he was doing the Happy Dance songs. All over the industry, Hammer was used as a punching bag for all that was wrong with the commercialization of hip-hop. From Red Man to Ice Cube, if you wanted to say someone was a punk sellout, you invoked MC Hammer's name. But nah, he wasn't a sellout here. He was given magical shoes from a hip-hop Motown dude. KFC Honey Barbecue Fried Chicken, or your neck of the woods. Okay, okay, that was pretty bad. But just regarding the music, nah, this wasn't him being a sellout. To me, a sellout is someone who forsakes their original style purely for profit. And being the happy, friendly rap guy who just wanted to dance, that's what MC Hammer already was. Where he sold out was when he did this, when he tried to change to a more gangster persona to keep with the times. Not that he wasn't actually about that life. I mean, the guy apparently put a hit out on MC Search. Seriously, look up any rapper who's actually met MC Hammer and the dude is like no punk. But, well, he wasn't a good enough MC to make you believe that, especially with the subpar skills he was flexing before. 
I mean, plenty of rappers transition from one style to another, and personally, I'd make the case that his rapping here is actually a massive improvement from the awkwardly stretching words to fill up space style that he was doing before. But the fact that that caliber of corniness is now being transitioned into being hardcore, it was just too sharp of a dissonance for some people. Another problem was the dancing. Thing is, he tried to transplant his dance style onto gangster rap, but it didn't work because, well, gangster rappers don't dance, especially not like this. You were gonna catch MC8 doing the running man in a video. Honestly, this is a case where the image completely overshadowed the music and it blew up in his face. Especially for going from gold genie pants and Urkel glasses with the chopped up relaxed hair pulled back into a baby rat tail to oversized all black stocking caps and jerseys. And especially considering the fact that he's still trying to do the dance move while wearing those things. It looks like an out of touch dad trying to copy his teenage son. It just comes off like a pose. Honestly, if you completely divorce the silly costumes from the song though, maybe this joint could have stood the test of time as as an old school throwback classic, but as it stands, the personification of overcompensation that is the music videos ruined any chance of that happening. But he definitely should have gone with this video instead of the banana hammock one, and maybe just toned down the exaggerated clothing. Because honestly, it's not that bad of a song by itself. Uh, not sure what skibbity is supposed to mean here, and I think it's kind of funny that he's acting like this song is going to be the thing that's going to put him back on the spotlight when it served more as the signifier of his downfall than anything, but you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Also, I just thought about something. In his attempt to appear more street and sexy, I think he underestimated just how much of his audience were kids and parents of kids. I mean, like I showed you, his biggest hit song was about religion. That's aiming for a very specific crowd, one that doesn't exactly stick around when you start thrusting your junk in their face. And the gangster rap crowd definitely isn't buying a guy in a zebra thong, so he must have really been banking on that female audience. And while it did chart for a while, it wasn't enough to stop the inevitable. One of the main ways I can tell it's the image that ruined him is because, well, if you listen to the actual lyrics, he never actually talks about being a gangster. There's no mention of 40 ounces or guns, being a killer, or rolling with a gang. If you wanna give me what a gang, baby, Okay, he mentions being a G in there, but overall, it's just about liking girls with big butts who happen to be wearing heels. I mean, that's not an exclusively NWA topic. I said big butts, but many people say another word for big butts. But what I mean is big butts. The fuck? I don't even have commentary for these lyrics. I'm just putting them here because the lyric sites I've gone to have gotten these rhymes completely wrong. Not that anyone would be losing their job in 2017 for getting hammer lyrics wrong or anything, but as a rap critic, it's my duty to make sure history gets these lyrics right, even if it is for something as stupid and silly as MC Hammer drooling over giant booties. I do this for the culture, damn it! Overall, I give this song a 3 out of 5. It's average, not as bad as people like to make it out to be because of the video, but not some forgotten gem of a song either. Check it out if you're just starving for more 90s booty anthems beyond Sir Mix-a-Lot, but eh, it's not an essential listen or anything. Well, I'm the rap critic. You don't have to like my opinion, but I don't have to like your song.